that there was no pressure in the jails to cause it to be a local problem. When it was a state problem, I think that people started to come into prison in droves. And I think that's when we went from the 100 to 130, 160, up to 180, and it's been a continuing growth trend ever since. Because people perceive that the criminal justice system is full of holes and that their people have not been held accountable, and uh, they are trying to st plug up the holes and make sure that they are held accountable, and it's being done with a passion. They're checking their instruments, putting them together, making sure all is well with a tool that could earn them a lot of free education and notoriety. They're studying the music, the music with the outlandish titles, the music that means dancing, toe tapping, and Bourbon Street. It's called Dixieland, and the Central State Dixieland Band is one of the best in the nation. One, two, one, two, three. The band was one of three ensembles picked from a field of 80 to compete in the national finals in Kansas City. According to the director of the band, the music is more to them than just a way to earn recognition. It's an earlier form of jazz or popular music and uh, the students these days don't get that much opportunity to learn about it and play it and I think it's it's important American music it's uh, sort of the some of the founding blocks of what we hear now in, in the way of jazz popular music and so forth and so it's on to Kansas City for a weekend of competition and a lot of fun The Noble School System has 2,400 students. It's one of the fastest growing school districts in the state. Noble also has one of the fastest growing school budget deficits. State funding cuts may trim $600,000 off the district's budget, and that's caused cutbacks in Noble schools. This is the high school's only cafeteria. Construction was stopped last month. You need to choose four of the questions. There are six of them. And you need to answer them in well-developed paragraphs, okay? Five, Most seven, tests are given seven. orally. Make Students sure now use their own paper because the school has virtually eliminated use of the copier. And sunshine lights some of the hallways. The fluorescent lights have been turned off to save on the electric bill. At Noble's Mid-High, the hall lights are on, but the heat's down. Timers have been installed to keep heating and cooling costs down. Sports programs and other extracurricular activities have also felt the budget acts. The school no longer provides transportation to all out-of-town sporting events. But despite the cutbacks, many students understand the school's budget crunch. The teachers, they just told us what's going on and what we're not going to be able to do and what we're going to be able to do. But, you know, we don't really know why, what's going on. We just know that there's not much money left. <laughs> At least one teacher feels the cutbacks have been made indiscriminately. Eighteen people, uh, four people who are doing jobs, working with the kids, seeing them every day, people who have made contacts within the community and have established their lives here are being let go. Noble Superintendent Phil Sellers says the cuts may have jeopardized the quality of education. Is it we'll have anywhere from 30 to 50 schools in this state that will be financially bankrupt at the end of the 1982-83 school year? Sellers says February 1st is D-Day for the Noble School System. He says by that time, this school district should know whether they can survive the state cutbacks. Debbie Mash, Action 4 in Noble.
Are you going to shut down on the 31st? Yes. 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 Do you yep. want to shut no. down on the 31st? No. 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 Okay. Not one of these truckers wanted to be here tonight, but each felt they had run out of alternatives, as well as money. The word had traveled quickly from CB to CB that a meeting was being held and a decision was going to be made to go to work or to go home. It's true the nickel gas tax is responsible for this angry grouping, but it's the entire bill that gets the credit for the strike. What was bothering me is that the tax on the road tax right now is $210 a year for my rig. They're going to $1,700. By 1988, they're going to $2,000 a year. License plates for my rig cost $1,400 or something dollars a year. They're talking about doubling that to $2,800. Uh, they're talking about it. They haven't done that yet. But every time we buy tax, every time we turn around, we're getting taxed. Okay. They say it's these taxes that have forced the truckers into the decision to strike January 31st. They hate to use the word strike. That implies their union and want better benefits and pay. These guys just want to be able to work and feed their families. We are going to lose our livelihood, which are these green, yellow, brown, and white rigs sitting right here. That's our family's livelihood. And if we can't pay the taxes, we can't make the payments, we cannot raise our family. This is what it's boiling down to. The problems the nation's truckers are facing now may soon be our problems if the shutdown actually happens. No 18-wheelers on the road means no produce and products on the shelves. If the truckers go home, Many of us could go hungry. Sherry Sellers, Action 4 at the Union 76 truck stop. In an effort to get the classes they want, many students are enrolling for fall courses. And in order to get the money they need, students should also begin applying for financial assistance. Colleges report that now is the best time for students to turn in federal and state grant applications. Student financial aid is helping me. I help you. A third of all students at state colleges and universities receive financial aid, but the funds are limited. The money is given according to need and who's first. And if we don't have funds uh, for those who apply late, uh, we just don't have that resource to provide to them at all. We'll have to look at other resources or perhaps not have any extra resource. So those who apply early will get those funds first. Hancock says by applying now, students can know within a month if they are eligible for federal aid. Some students can receive grants for 100% of their college expenses. Debbie Mash, Action 4 at Central State University. It was a long, cold wait for many Oklahoma City residents today. Some of these people had been braving the elements for up to three hours just to receive a couple of pounds of free butter and cheese. The federal government is giving away the dairy products to the poor or senior citizens on a fixed income. It's all in a continuing effort to reduce the dairy supplies in government warehouses. At this one center, there were at least a thousand persons filling out forms necessary for receiving cheese and butter. At times, the situation became chaotic and confusing for community action program workers and citizens. Frustration soon took over. While all the pushing and shoving went on, the butter and cheese supplies were all given out. Then came the question, will more dairy products be arriving at the center soon? Well, we don't know. We just really don't know. They're, you know, wanting to know is there other locations that they can get them, but, you know, everybody has just given up. CAP officials say the butter and cheese giveaways are a good indicator as to how the economy is doing. It would appear, according to CAP workers, that the situation is getting worse since the lines are becoming so much longer. The government has tons of butter and cheese still waiting for distribution and millions of people waiting for the next giveaway announcement. Ed Stewart, Action for the Southwest Community Center. Got me. I mean, you know, here I 
newspapers and magazines and start doing the same. It, you know, it's, it's just wrong. And I asked the postal inspector, I said, you know, I've heard that this same thing is going on from one town to another. Can't you put an end to it? And they said, as soon as we close them down in one place, they go to some other place. The winter of uh, 82 and 83, this was the first big day of the major interruptions caused by weather conditions here at Will Rogers World Airport. If you'll recall, a few days ago we had heavy snows. However, snow and icy uh, runway conditions does not adversely affect the airline operations as much as low visibility. There are many school districts that just do not have any kind of a surplus in their, in their budget to be able to withstand this kind of a problem. So the biggest difficulty uh, that we're having right now is trying to figure out how that percentage of cutback is going to be applied to our common schools across this state. We're going to have to come up with some very uh, ingenuous uh, uh, mechanism to keep those school districts with this sort of a problem from closing. I think we're talking about an increase of, on the amounts of the fines. I think we're talking about an increase in the uh, enforcement of existing laws and uh, any number of things I think that we could do to, to help that situation. Uh, and I think that you'll find that in those areas of this state where these oil field trucks are the most active is where the greater part of the damage uh, is occurring and the, those parts of the state where there is no oil activity uh, the damage is almost non-existent You think the smoke detector in this case uh, saved your oh, life? Yeah. By all yeah. means, I really do. And I rec highly recommend in any any apartment, house, or home that don't have, I recommend highly to get them because it's really worth it. It's not that expensive, and uh, I figure even if it was to save lives, I think it's worth it. Students are being advised to be a little more careful on the University of Oklahoma campus. Assaults are noticeably up from previous years. Campus police are not able to pinpoint any one area where trouble may occur. Besides being concerned about rapes and assaults, authorities have recorded a big jump in harassing and annoying complaints. Women are cautioned to stay away from potential danger situations. A student-operated escort service is staying busy taking co-eds home in the late evening from the library or late-night classes. All escorts have identification okaying them by police.
Authorities say crimes against person are the hardest to prevent. Assaults particularly, and rapes as well, tend to be spontaneous. They're not predictable. and generally do not take place in a specific area or a specific time frame. They can occur anytime and, and virtually anywhere. Captain Stone encourages students to use these emergency phones around the university. Just pick the phones up when there's trouble and they automatically dial the police department. It's too early to tell if this is going to be a big year for campus crime. But police think with the help of student organizations, rape and assaults will be down this year. Ed Stewart, Action for the University of Oklahoma. No doubt most people have one or more telephones at home. But is the phone bought or rented? In the coming months, you will be encouraged to buy all your phones if you already haven't done so, simply because Southwestern Bell is getting out of the telephone rental business. Phone sales are expected to surpass home computers, and buying a telephone should save you money in the long run. We can help them save money and uh, at the same time maybe set them up with a type of telephone service that can better fit their needs uh, in their customer service line. So we try to help them save money and get a better um, telephone set up for their home. Rushing says most places where your telephone is purchased will be able to repair the phone if necessary, while Ma Bell will continue only to service your telephone line and custom calling features. It will be a while before the public decides, is buying a telephone really better? Ed Stewart, Action 4 at Shepherd Mall. His name is Neil Gilson. Gilson said if he sold equipment to Adair, he would pay Adair a 10% kickback. When Assistant U.S. Attorney Charlie Waters asked him why, Gilson said, when in Rome, do as the Romans. Sometimes Gilson served as a broker for other companies. He would sell equipment for those companies to Adair. The companies would pay Gilson a commission. Gilson said he would give half of his commission to Adair as a kickback. At other times, Gilson would sell some of the county's equipment for Adair. Judge Luther Eubanks heard Gilson testify that on one occasion, he sold four trucks for $24,000. The county's records show the trucks were sold for $20,000. Gilson said he split the extra $4,000 with Ralph Adair. Gilson said he split $5,000 with Adair on the sale of equipment to Platte County, Nebraska. Oklahoma County records show the sale was for $30,000, but Gilson said he actually made the sale for $35,000. Gilson also testified to several other similar transactions. that's in the best interest of everyone. No one's trying to keep this opportunity to be heard and also be briefed on what the situation The situation that Oklahoma faces is not a crisis, uh, but it is a major readjustment. We in the legislature continue to have that commitment to the quality educational systems in the common schools throughout the state, in the vocational technical education programs throughout the state, and in higher education. We must not allow ourselves to use uh, these times as an excuse to let that commitment fade.
the average truck today is five months behind on his truck payments. There's many driver out here that has not been home for three, four, five months because he knows if he goes home they're going to repossess his truck. He just keeps keeps trying and keeps trying. Those those kind of people, they're you've got them backed into a corner. The type of jewelry being removed is called poisoning. It gets its name from the tiny wires that run through its enamel coloring. The jewelry comes in many forms, pendants, beads, belt buckles, and even hair barrettes. The state health department has discovered that some of the pieces are radioactive. And now we're going to go to the hot one and you'll see the difference. So far, the health department's testing has shown only 50% of the cloisonne jewelry to be radioactive. But just to be on the safe side, they're asking owners not to wear it. Just simply don't wear the radioactive cloisonne jewelry. Uh, we feel it's probably all right to retain it in the jewelry box uh, uh, because of the uh, relatively low um, dose rate of the radiation. The department stresses that the jury is not dangerous. It's just an unnecessary exposure to radiation. The only possible risk is a slight skin rash. If you have any questions about your jury, bring it into the state health department. They'll be glad to check it for you. Sherry Sellers, Action 4 at the state health department. some programs for example we have a was asked to be included in that she I think she's looking for a boy a good looking yeah young man what kind of private industry would you teach our upper reform number one you must have a good program number two you must have a good staff and number three you must have good facilities obviously of those that I've mentioned I'm more concerned about the facilities than um, any other area And I think 18 is a, is a tough age uh, to, to enforce because of its, uh, its proximity to the age of students in high school. And I feel that uh, if there's some way you could say you had to have a high school graduate to be 18, uh, I would support that kind of concept. But I would, my first inclination is to, to, to make it unlawful for high school students to be old enough to, to drink. The plan would merely give school districts an option for seven and a half hour days instead of five, six hour days a week. Some schools say they could save thousands of dollars every year if they went to the new system in transportation, utilities, and other costs. But today, Senate members squared off and disagreed strongly on the benefits for students in a modified school year. We take the 55 minute class period as the utopia of education. What's so consistent about 55 minutes being an educational period? We've got the bells ringing, we've got the clock set, we know exactly when to walk in the building. So we don't want to be bothered. Don't break the thing, it's working. The attention span of these young people in common schools won't last seven and a half hours. Uh, you're at the expense of saving some money on transportation and utilities, you're going to hurt quality education in Oklahoma. 
and we can't, have, we can't afford to have it hurt anymore. The senators voted on the side of economics. They voted down an emergency clause that would allow the plan to go into effect immediately if passed and signed by the governor. That could mean no help this year for schools from a four-day school week. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4 at the state capitol. Keep in mind, this is... I think it's very important for this office and the district attorneys of the state of Oklahoma to not overdo or redo what the federal authorities have already done, I think, very effectively. On the other hand, where the cases exist, where no justice has taken place, if you will, nobody's been prosecuted, and perhaps we can, based on a broader law, statute of limitations wise, and where the cases exist, perhaps where there's been no restitution made to the people of the state of Oklahoma. I think you can expect this office to move forward as it professionally and properly should. But we're going to do it a step at a time and we're going to do it right. An estimated six to eight million illegal aliens come into the United States each year. Some of the aliens are temporarily incarcerated in detention centers until they are deported or become citizens. The United States government had selected El Reno as one of the two finalists for the next detention center. The $17 million center would have been located next to the town's prison, but El Reno lost out. I kind of expected uh, it to be located in Louisiana. I think it was about a 50-50. I think there were a lot of unanswered questions that were never uh, resolved. So a lot of the people in the community had mixed emotions about the type of facility, the type of uh, illegal aliens that would be held, the length of stay, and so forth. Most of the townspeople we talked to didn't consider losing the detention center a loss to the community. I didn't want it here to begin with. I really didn't. Uh, it really didn't matter to me in the first place, really. I'm glad it's not here. Debbie Mash, Action 4 in El Reno. Beer drinking has become the national pastime for college students around the country, so much so that drinking is a big problem at many universities. It's been estimated 70 to 90 percent of all college students drink some type of alcoholic beverage on a regular basis. Officials at the University of Oklahoma are not sure students are drinking more than they have in the past, or maybe it just seems that way because the problem is finally receiving attention. Several workshops and seminars have been started at OU to educate students about the effects of drinking. The message is getting drunk can only lead to trouble. We talk to them about uh, responsible drinking behavior, responsible hosting behavior, uh, the medical aspects of this drug, and, and that's kind of the key issue. We try to let them know that what they're dealing with is a sedative drug and uh, that it's very difficult to uh, uh, get to your educational goal if you're going to be sedating yourself. We have a lot of students who, in a short-term basis, abuse alcohol, uh, who maybe uh, go out for a weekend or during the week, uh, drink, get drunk, come back, maybe uh, uh, kick in a door or something. Uh, a lot of vandalism, the majority of the vandalism at the university uh, is related to drinking. Alcohol abuse is a far more dangerous and widespread problem than illegal drug use on campuses. OU is just one of hundreds of colleges to look for solutions. But it's a frustrating situation for universities because so many students regard drinking as an important part of campus fun. A recent survey showed two-thirds of college undergraduates admitted to driving while intoxicated and a third confessed they had missed class because of being drunk or a hangover they couldn't shake. Most colleges can accept the fact that students will continue to drink. They only hope those same students will drink not to get drunk. Ed Stewart, Action for the University of Oklahoma.